And now, coming to you live from the math department, AB Calculus. Dance. 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 Chapter 3 Derivatives. Section 3.1 The Derivative of a Function. If you recall, in the last chapter, we said that the slope of a curve, y equals f of x, at any point a, f of a, is defined as m equal to the limit, as h approaches 0, of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. And where this limit exists, this gives us the slope of the tangent line to the curve at that point a. We also say that this is the derivative of f at a. But let's go even further with this. Rather than forcing ourselves to calculate the limit for each individual point on a function, let's derive a formula, a, a new function, so that no matter what the value of x is, we have a way to calculate the derivative. Definition. 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 The derivative of the function f with respect to the variable x is the new function f prime of x whose value at x is given as f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x minus h minus f of x all over h, assuming, of course, that the limit exists. Now, there's a few things here that we need to note about this new derivative function f prime of x. First of all, the domain of f prime of x may be equal to or smaller than the domain of f of x, but it certainly may not be larger. When f prime of x exists, we say that f is differentiable at x, or that f has a derivative at x. A function that is differentiable at all points in its domain is called a differentiable function. Differentiate and then graph both f of x and f prime of x. So f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0, 2 times x plus h cubed minus 2x cubed all over h. And let's just work on this, simplifying this limit here. Uh, I could do x plus h times x plus h times x plus h, but that would be a real waste of my time. Uh, and then subtract 2x cubed from that and have it all over h. But instead, what I'd rather do is go back to pre-calc 12 and remember that we can expand this using the binomial theorem and that the coefficients of this expansion are going to follow the terms of Pascal's triangle. And since this is x plus h to the power of 3, there will be four terms, and the coefficients will be 1, 3, 3, and 1. So instead of actually multiplying all of this stuff out, I'm going to do x cubed plus 3x squared h plus 3xh squared plus h cubed, and all of that times 2. And then this will simplify down to 2x cubed plus 6x squared h plus 6xh squared plus 2h cubed minus 2x cubed all over h. Of course, we've got 2x cubed and minus 2x cubed, and those can cancel. And then these remaining terms all have a common factor of h, and so I can reduce this down simply to 6x squared plus 6xh plus 2h squared. And what is the limit of this as h approaches 0? That limit, which is f prime of x, is simply equal to 6x squared, because both of these terms will become 0. Now let's look at graphing both of these. The original function was y equals 2x to the power of 3. There it is. And then the derivative function, we said, is y is equal to 6x squared. And what's important to note here with these two functions is that any point on this function here, 
say say negative 0.5 1.5 that y value is the slope here at negative 0.5 if you found the slope right there at that point it is 1.5 and that is happening all the way along consider the slopes here on this function as we move along these are all positive slopes oh they're getting very close to zero here they flatten out and now they're positive again but they're very small positive slopes and then increasing in value so positive slopes quite steep here positive slopes quite close to zero zero and then positive slopes again getting larger in value well that's what all these y values are these are positive y values quite large but getting closer to zero still positive then hitting zero then going positive once again and increasingly getting larger there's a comparison between the two graphs now an alternate method of stating the derivative of the function is to consider that x is equal to a plus h and therefore that h is equal to x minus a if we substitute these values into the previous formula for f prime of x it gives us f prime of a is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a and this again is assuming that the limit actually exists so here's an example differentiate f of x equals 2 over x using the alternate definition that f prime of a is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a so in our case this is the limit of 2 over x minus 2 over a all over x minus a and let's simplify that limit we need a common denominator on top of ax this gives us 2a minus 2x over ax and that's all over x minus a and this then is 2a minus 2x over ax divided by x minus a which is better written as times 1 over x minus a and I actually probably should have factored on the top here taking out a common factor of negative 2 leaving me with x minus a which cancels and I get negative 2 over ax now since x is approaching a this is negative 2 over a times a put this up here if we apply this formula to any values of x not equal to 0 that are still in the domain of f then we have the derivative for this as f prime of x is equal to negative 2 over x and that's over the entire domain for f at this point in time I think it's helpful if we just pause and make a note about the notation that we see here when talking about the derivatives see due to the fact that there were many people involved in the invention discovery founding of calculus there are different methods of notation and different bits of terminology for instance what Newton called fluxions Leibniz called derivatives or whatever the German equivalent would be I suppose as a result there are several different ways of writing the derivative of f of x and you'll see them all at various times because they each have their various useful aspects first of all y prime written like this it's very to the point tells us we're just looking for the derivative of y it omits telling us the name of the independent variable f prime of x or f prime at x this is a pretty standard notation it tells us this is the derivative of f with respect to x dy dx or the derivative of y with respect to x names both variables emphasizes derivative by the use of the letter d df dx or the derivative of f with respect to x the emphasis here is put on the name of the function f rather than on the y variable and d dx f of x or the derivative of f at x the emphasis here is that the derivative is obtained by carrying out some procedure on f of x so now comparing f of x to f prime of x consider the graph of y equals f prime of x shown below well if you look at everything on here to the left of negative 2 the value of the derivative is positive 2 
meaning the slope of everything to the left is 2. Everything to the right of negative 2 has a derivative of negative 1, or a slope of negative 1. It sounds like two linear equations to me put together in some kind of a piecewise function. If I graph it, it might look something like this with a slope of 2 on the left and negative 1 going to the right. Of course, I don't actually know that it sits right here. I don't know a point on the original function. I don't know its y-intercept. So maybe it sits lower like this. Or maybe it sits higher up like this. I don't really know for sure. That's something that I could solve if someone gave me an initial value. One-sided derivatives. A function is considered to be differentiable over a closed interval, AB, if it has a derivative at every interior point of the interval and if the derivatives at the endpoints exist as one-sided derivatives. Since a derivative is a limit, the derivative may only exist if the left and right hand limits both exist and if they're both equal to each other. At the left endpoint A of an interval, we cannot find its left hand limit, only its right hand limit. Likewise at B, we can only find the left hand limit. So for a function f of x, if the right-hand derivative and the left-hand derivative at an interior point C are not equal, then the derivative does not exist at x equals C. For example, find the derivative at x equals 1 for this piecewise function, f of x. We want the derivative at this point here. So we need to consider the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit. Now visually, I can see that those are actually not going to be the same. Again, I'm talking about the left-hand limit of the slope and the right-hand limit of the slope. I'm not talking about the left-hand limit of f of x. I want to consider the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 plus h squared minus 1 squared over h. This is, of course, 1 plus 2h plus h squared minus 1 all over h. The 1's cancel. We can eliminate the h from the as a common factor and have 2 plus h. So what is that limit? Simply 2. This is the left-hand limit. I forgot to indicate that there before, as h is approaching 0 from the left. Now let's consider the right-hand limit. What is the limit? as h approaches 0 from the right. Well, since I'm approaching from the right, I have to use this function here. Negative 1 plus h plus 2 minus negative 1 plus 2 all over h. This gives me negative 1 minus h plus 2 plus 1 minus 2. I could have tidied that up, but didn't all over h, and this of course gives me 1 and 1, 2 and minus 2, just leaves me with negative h over h, which is negative 1. What's the limit of negative 1? It is equal to negative 1. And obviously we know that's the slope for this function here. Is there a derivative at this point here? No, there's not a derivative. The left-hand limit is 2. Right here on this par parabolic side of it, the slope is 2 at that instant. And on the right-hand side, the slope is negative 1. So there is no derivative at x equals 1. It's a continuous function, but there's no derivative at that value. Two for you! Number one, use our f prime of x notation involving the limit to determine the derivative of f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 3. And then the second question here, Given the graph of y equals f of x, sketch the graph of its derivative. Well, that's our song. That means it's time for us to go. Have a little bit of fun with these questions. See how you can do with them. Until next time, keep your pencil sharp, and I'll see you in class. Dance.